It's Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's IndyCar Night on iRacing. Hello again, everyone. I am Gary Gatso, and welcome to Race First coverage of Round 4 of Season 2 of 2024 of the IndyCar Oval Series for the Tuesday Night Top Split. Coming to you from the first leg of 
what we're going to call the Race First Triple Crown Challenge. California Speedway and Fontana, because I refuse to call it Auto Club. As always, joining <laughs> me for expert analysis in the booth, he's a regular participant in the iRacing IndyCar Tour, or now Series. Please welcome Justin Petschauer, and also uh, he's going to be here with us eventually, but uh, he's he's getting hit with these uh, extra bit of updates that uh, iRacing pushed down to us today, and it's the uh, El Patron. He is here with us, the boss man from Mexico City, Antonio Estrada. He'll be joining us just momentarily. Uh, Justin, uh, man, everything I've heard so far leading up to this one is going to be a barn burner, and that's uh, kind of always been the case any time that we bring these cars back to uh, California Speedway. Do you expect any anything to be different today? No, I do not expect anything different to be anything to be different at all. Well, we put on the series will always put on the most amazing racing here. A little bit better than NASCAR, but of course it's going to be pack racing that we saw here a couple of weeks ago when the iRacing IndyCar series was here. And I kind of really don't want to talk about the horror stories that I suffered. <laughs> Both of those races here. But other than that, it's going to be some of the most insane, fantastic racing. Probably not as good as what we saw here in 2015 with the Mad TV 500. If you don't know what I mean by that, folks, after this race is done, go to the IndyCar and go to YouTube and type in 2015 Mad TV 500. The whole race is up there on the IndyCar YouTube channel. It was absolutely bonkers race. In IndyCar race. Insane. Insane. Yes. Watching right now, uh, Kendall Carpenter uh, complete uh, his run. A lot of uh, the regulars are kind of taking their time. Uh, Clinton's already gone. Tross is gone uh, with a 220.3 for Tross, a 220.2 for Clint with Wilhite uh, on the pole there in the uh, IAR Delara uh, with a 220.5. Let's see who else is going here at the moment. Bruno Romanzini's on the track. Let's get the camera on him. There he is. We know him to be fast right down to the white line on the backstretch. Uh, let's take a look here uh, at the point situation in the IndyCar Oval Series. Robert Bleschka is your leader. Jacob Oster, P2. Jason Brophy, P3. I believe everybody is in uh, the lineup here tonight. Uh, Ty Quilla, P4. Good start to the season for him. He's in the lineup tonight. Bruno Romanzini, of course, on our screen. Watching him right now. Eric Triano, P6. Clindy, P7. Uh, Hamilton Akubwezi, also known now as the Iceman, is P8. Tracy did P9. And if you notice that he doesn't have a little friend symbol next to him, so he still has not accepted my friend request on iRacing. Tanner Richards, P10. Stephen Lee, 11th, Alan Marrera, 12th, Brendan Lichtenberg, 13th, Nick Sudik, 14th, and Rafi Eckert, 15th. That's your top 15 here in the Oval Series. As you see, weather, 105 degree track temperature with 78 degree ambient. And we got about 28 seconds left. And AJ Musselman, that's right, and AJ on the pole in IndyCar. You can't have IndyCar without an AJ in the lineup. To the top, exactly. 220.876. Nick Sudik, 220.716. And Robert Molechka, RM3, 220.705. Your top three. And Trey Shedid is in there at fourth with a 220.6. So everyone very, very close. Six seconds left to play. And we are going to go racing, boys. And I'm just going to say this. As far as the weather is concerned, the ambient air temp and the track temp, that's roughly about what it usually is around this time of the year for Fontana. What do you say we uh we get down that starting grid there? Yeah, let's get Gary? it uh let's get it up there on the screen. Boom, there it is. That's nope, that is the results. And AJ Musselman did not win yet. Starting grid, Gary. There we go. Starting <laughs> grid. Starting <laughs> grid. Starting grid. There we go. Starting grid is up. How about a little background music, Gary? Sure, we can do that too. Starting on the pole tonight, of course, like you said, you it's if it's it's not IndyCar unless there's an AJ on the pole. That is AJ Musselman with a fast qualifying time of 32.610. Nicholas Sadiq starting on starting in second place on his outside. Robert Molechka the third starting third. Trisha did starting fourth, and Adriana for, Adriana for 40 starting fifth. Gary, take it away. Ah, we got Sub Alexander lining up six there in the I for Team IAR. 
moving on further on back. Brophy seventh. The Sidewinder Ragon in eighth. Uh, Ponto, we will talk about his paint job here later in P9. Uh, name we haven't seen here in the top split, but a very good P, uh, qualifying in P10 is Stefan Harding. Uh, Chris Wilhite, 11th. Ty Quilla in 12th. Moving on back further, Trost 13th. We'll probably see him storm up to the front. Roman Zini 14th. Clindy 15th. Expect to see him up front as well. Stephen Lee 16th. Another fast uh, guy in the back there. We expect to see up front there. Lining up there. Uh, and I said there a lot of times. Kendall, Kendall Carpenter <laughs> 17th. Dylan Moskowitz 18th. Curtis Sawyer 19th. Uh, and then with no time, but lining up according to I rating. Panero, 20th, Jacob Oster, 21st, Brian Campbell, 22nd, Ben Rinaldi, 23rd, and Jacob Collins, 24th. I think we got one more here. Jim, Jim Wallen. I've been calling him Jim Whalen, and he's been sure to get to uh, to get in contact with me. And so it's Wallen, so it is now Wallen. Hopefully we don't see him in the wall tonight, though. He is lining up 25th and last. Shotgun on the field, but this is Fontana, and really no one is shotgun uh, because the grid, uh, because the 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 uh, draft here is such the equalizer. Oh, the draft, you can get the biggest draft from even in the back of the field and basically start making your moves through the field. You want to be careful, though, because it's not like a stock car here where even if you get the draft, you can beat and bang a little bit with these cars here. If you touch even this, even with wheel to wheel contact in three, four, heck, even five wide conditions, it can all lead to disaster. And a couple weeks ago, there was a few races that had the big one in them here at Fontana. And hello, guys. And I'm finally here. There he is. And we'll let you in just a second. <laughs> uh, the cart track record, of course, you know, the uh, world closed course record was set here. 241.428 by Jill DeFerrin. Indy car track record set by Elio Castro Neves in, 20, in 2003 of a 226.758. The fastest 400-mile Indy car race was held here also back in 2003, won by uh, Sam Hornish, 207.1. All-time career winners here is Hornish, Jimmy Vassar, Adrian Fernandez. Each have two. Fernandez is notable because he's the only one with the win in cart and the win in the IRL. Getting ready to go racing, boys. Let's see how this hand. Let's see this how this all trickles down here as we're getting ready to go racing. 60 laps, 120 miles of pack racing to be seen. Here we go. And it, like you said, in the words of Kevin Lee, here we go. Already, they're starting to get single file in certain spots. As they head off towards turn number one, seems like everybody wants to try and play it safe here. But of course, like you said, with the draft, it's going to be chaos. Well, Already RM3 there's is ducking to yeah, the back. That's, to that's actually <laughs> Brophy. All of them are using uh, <laughs> RM3 paint schemes, but oh, okay. uh, Brophy. <laughs> they are trying to confuse us. I was about to say, <laughs> a little bit of a confusion there. But of course, we see a couple of two by two through some of the field there. Nick Shadik to the front. Yeah, almost three wide there between eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh going off into one. Already great racing to the pack. Oh, that was closer. I couldn't see who that was. That was Stephen Harding that almost made contact with Alexander Ragon. And I think a number of other drivers are saying, ah, oh, yeah, we don't like what we're seeing up there. AJ Musselman being yeah, one of them. Yeah, he's one of them. He's, he's falling back. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think I... I I think if I remember correctly, he was in a couple of the IIS races here at Fontana and was just like, ah, yeah, no. Ah. Well, yeah, he was. Remember, he won that opening split that uh, where everyone got uh, uh, disqualified, yeah. and he had the high IQ finish of uh, of towing before the white flag, and uh, that's how he managed to get the win there. But uh, we are two by two by two down the backstretch here and Fontana. Yeah, Alexander McGaugh up on the outside there of, I believe, that is Chris Wilhite and uh, Stephen Harding. He's, he's trying to play it safe. He sees what's going on. He still wants to try and make, make his moves. But like you see as here, look at that. Uh, the huge draft run that we get going into turn one. A number of these guys are just going, okay, it, it, this is madness, absolute madness. We want to play it safe, but still try and, you know, ease our way up towards the front. Well, like, if, if I wanted to play it safe, I'm not I'm not going three wide with the sidewinder, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Will Height has uh, Will Height's got a car up on his outside. That is Curtis Sawyer. As uh, Sawyer is, he he's doing the same thing. Like I said, he's 
He's timing his moves perfectly. But these guys are definitely playing it smart and safe by not having like a, a huge glob of cars that are going three going three wide, three five rows deep, heck even four wide. I mean, you're gonna have a little bit of both. You're gonna have guys that are going for it, uh, like Stefan Harding. I just saw him jump a lot of uh, places on the outside right now. Of uh, Seba Alexander there now taking fifth, and then you're gonna have a lot of guys that are just gonna be saving fuel. Uh, that's kind of what we were doing on the the, the A15 one last night, and uh, so, so you're gonna see a little bit of a mixture of both. As, yeah, as Stefan yeah, yeah, is yeah. now catching. Sorry, yeah. Stefan is catching now. Uh, Robert Maleska, who is using Jason Brophy's paint scheme, so they want to confuse us even further. I believe that's their uh, their April Fools uh, joke. But uh, Harding there and the uh, and the Steinbrenner Harding entry that uh, Colton Herta used to drive. Uh, if he recognized that. Uh, let's take a look here at one that I saw in practice. Matthew Ponto, that is the 1978 uh, Dan Gurney paint job on the car that Al, uh, Bobby Unser drove for the 500 that season. And uh, they always like good seeing these throwback. Quilla deciding that he's had enough and he's going to kind of fall to the back, I think. Or is that Molechka? That's Molechka. Yeah, that was Molechka. Now he's going right down to the apron. Yeah, it, at these speeds, though, behind another car, you definitely do not want to touch the apron because the old saying goes, even though it, in a stock car, apron <laughs> in three and four, you can get away with. Apron in an Indy car here, bad. No go. Yeah, apron bad. That's uh, typically the way that it goes. So, I mean, just look at this. There's at least one group of three wide going into one. There's another group of three wide going into three as well. Uh, it, like I said, you figured these guys would have been going three. Oh, that was close. Oh, Carla, oh. Oh. That's Sawyer. That's Sawyer. Easy, buddy. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah. Sawyer I in, he, Sawyer I in that uh, that uh, Schmidt Peterson uh, throwback. I think he was doing. I think that was a reactionary move to Stephen Lee because it looked like Stephen Lee coming off a of turn four, almost, almost uh, white walled the tire. Well, not white wall, blue walled the tires <laughs> to the point he almost scraped off the Firestone Firehawk lettering on his tires. Well, Roman Zini to the front now, but still have Nick Sudik down low, Harding up high, for Porty and Tradid right behind this duo. Here comes uh, Alexander and Stephen Lee. Yeah, and wheel height on the outside is taking them three wide. And that, that's another good thing, though, about Fontana with how wide this track is. You can get away with enough room to go three, four wide. Maybe Bro. even five. <laughs> They'll, yeah, try. Maybe. They'll try. They'll <laughs> try. Yeah. That's one thing about us IndyCar drivers on iRacing. We will go balls to the wall. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, sorry. Yeah, no, we tried it last night and it didn't quite work. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, where the, that's where you get the negative I rating Ooh. and safety rating from. Go ahead. Ooh, there was almost a block there by Trace Shadid on Chris Wilhite. Wilhite had to check up there. Smart play on his part because he saw what Trace Shadid was doing. Throwing that defense. I wouldn't say it was more of a defensive block, more like a uh, I need to get the hell out of this pack block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But still some fantastic so, uh, racing going around. We got some we got some blinkers out there, and that's kind of throwing our timing and scoring off. I think uh, I think the uh, uh, Ragon is uh, blinking out there, uh, but Panero up nine spots. He's up to eleventh. Uh, Romanzini up eleven. Stephen Lee up eleven. Uh, but again, the big equalizer is this draft. Uh, another name I want to give a shout out to Brian Campbell there in seventeenth. He's up five spots. Uh, I got a chance to actually talk to this guy and get to know him a little bit because I've been watching his uh, 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 performances on the ovals. Uh, he actually works uh, on an IndyCar team. I'm not going to say any more about that, though. Some so of another, us know. Another, Nobody else knows. An, another IndyCar uh, uh, member of the community uh, as part of the virtual community. Yeah, we also have to note there was a change for the lead. Yep. Stephen Harding. Harding. And Steinbrenner Harding Racing. But if you also look there, Stephen Lee is battling hard, going into three with Nick Sudik. Oh, is that a credit touch there just a little bit? Because I saw, I saw one wobble in three and four. Harding, Sudik, Lee, Romanzini, Wilhite, Shadid, Fraporti, Carpenter, Seb Alexander, Panero, your top ten. 
Yeah, and, good, and we know that good racing. We know that folks, some of the folks that are going to be going for it. That's uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Harding, Stephen Lee, uh, Fraporti, Romanzini. Those are guys that are not typically super happy to just uh, chill out and be laid back. No. In the field <laughs> no. They go for it, and they are at least Stefan is now leading, and Stephen Lee is trying his hardest to get by uh, uh, Nick Sadik there. Yeah, got he's trying. Oh, got a car back on the apron again. That is. Uh, uh, that's Sawyer, and we got to tell Sawyer that you need to stay off the apron there, even on the front stretch, buddy. Uh, he definitely does, but he probably got forced down there. Or yeah. Said, another reactionary move. Yep. Now, I did want to give a shout-out last week to Panero. He had a new paint job. He's back to his traditional orange. I, was, I told him, I said, I liked the new one, but he did not like the new one as much as he liked his traditional orange. His uh, old one, or the one he wore last week, is uh, basically what Regan's wearing right behind him, that kind of black and orange-looking car there. That, that's pretty slick. I, I liked it, and he had the, uh, the gold rims on it as well. I thought it worked very well, but he wanted to go back to the uh, bright orange. And it uh, makes them easier to point out and pick out in these races, that's for sure. I hate to interrupt you there. There was a pass on Stephen Lee by Bruno Romazzini moving up to P3. Stephen Lee stuck on the inside there of Kendall Carpenter and Chris Wilhite. Kendall Carpenter trying to get that draft off of Bruno Romazzini as they come off a of turn Ooh. number four. Side by side and a little bit of movement there by Stephen Lee. Stephen Lee will use the draft from Nick Sudik to try and blow past. Bruno Romanzini, but not going to work. He hits that dirty wall of air, washes up just a little bit, and almost gets up into Kendall Carpenter. But Carpenter wisely moves up as they come off a of turn two and down the backstretch. Yeah, Stephen Lee's drifting up quite a bit, and that's what's going to happen after a couple of laps in the inside. Uh, those tires are, you know, the, the, the tire temperature, the, the track temperature is really good and allows for a lot of pack racing, but it will punish the tires if you're, especially if you're in the inside for a long time, as uh, Nick Sadiq takes it easy. Stephen Lee goes by, but I think that Stephen that that Nick Sadik right now is saving a little bit of fuel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another Ooh, watch. Yeah, Stephen I saw that. Lee yeah, the Carpenter. But a number. Speaking of fuel saving, a number of these guys are probably between wheel three and wheel five in terms of fuel saving. You can still maintain contact with the field. You'll be down on a little bit on power though. But at times like this, even at a place like Fontana and hell, even Michigan. It can certainly work out in your favor, and Matt Hollibaugh can attest to that. <laughs> and here's Brandon Trost in 14th. Not as aggressive as he was last week, kind of in the mid-pack, biding his time. And uh, to be honest, I mean, uh, especially when a week that you have a lot of uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the NASCAR truck series fixed at, uh, at um, Martinsville, uh, that we're going to have some uh, probably some uh, truckers in the lineup. And uh, I got a feeling that some of these regulars that they we see uh, don't recognize some of these names. They're kind of taking a little bit of a more leisurely pace in the back, seeing what happens as these uh, new names, pace, maybe, maybe the truckers, maybe there's some of the taxi cab drivers, we don't know, uh, gets a better. Oh, Clindy pushes up in the Panero oh. almost. But maybe they're just uh, trying to get a good uh, handle of what's going on as this race shakes out. But uh, much as it did, um, uh, Antonio in the uh, IIS race, a lot of the series non-regulars stormed right to the front for that one. Yep, yeah, for sure. Most, most of you know the this you, you can look right now to the standings. You have Jacob Oster, Ty Quila, Robert Nolerska, uh Jim Wallen, Brophy, Musselman. They all drop to the back. They don't want anything to do with that pack right now because they know that by saving fuel, saving tire. Uh, they're going to be in there at the end. You can make a fuel run last around 47 laps, and if you took real good care of your tires, and if it goes green, then you can just plug into your pit stop, not take tires, and you're going to have a massive advantage. It's just one way to do it, uh, but I'm sure that they can also storm through the field if they want to. Yeah, cool. as we see another, this group of cars here going off into one. Look mm. at that run cool. there. Clindy to the middle. Down low, washes up a little bit, kind of rolls out of the throttle, riding on right over, riding over his shoulder right there. Oh, little bit three wide, argy bargy back there behind Kendall Carpenter. Yeah, Trust has uh, decided that he no longer wants to play play it safe. He's going to the front. Time to go. Time to go. Yeah, but he's got to watch out because he's he's definitely going to get the door slammed on him. That's for sure, as was the case by Kendall Carpenter. Yeah, but Tardigar goes high to the middle, and uh, Trost stays low and says, okay, I'll just take it. 
Well, he tried to take it, but, uh, uh yeah, I think he clipped yeah, he got it tight. just a little bit. Yeah. He got a little tight there, yep. Yeah, he got a little bit of understeer behind Kendall Carpenter and said, ah, uh, you know what, after what happened last week, I'm just, I'm just going to take it safe. And we hear a couple of cars calling in for a pit stop. And one of them is Trost. Coming to the line, we're riding with him right now. Also with him is uh, one of the RM3 lookalikes. Uh, both of them, Jacob uh, Oster and Jason Brophy, they both went to <laughs> both the of them. I, I, I'm, I'm going to start calling. I saw uh, on uh, the open where uh, they they had like now the mega team or whatever. It was kind of for an April Fool's joke. Um, they're uh, they're officially going to be known as the super best friends. I mean, if we're if we're going to do that, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be the super best friends, and 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 we'll just call a spade a spade here. <laughs> and, and, and you know, last night. Last night, Jacob Oster was saying, uh, was having in the chat that he was uh, Robert Molesko the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> As Glendy goes to the lead. Careful, War Man. Got... Careful, War Man. You know I like nicknames. And you could very, very, very quickly become RM4. <laughs> speaking of speaking of Clindy, Kyle Clensworth is going in. And there was a little bit of four wide as they were going to three and four. I think a couple of these guys here are going to start making their yeah, picks. Clindy up there, Clindy, Clindy, Clindy. Clindy. Oh, oh, oh and, and that's so Panero, the Panero in the wall. Panero. And Seb Alexander looks like, yep. Yeah. No caution, And how though. is that not a caution? No I don't know, but those guys that hit pit road, uh, they were probably thinking there for a second, um, I should probably keep going and not get a uh, penalty, or if they got on the pit road in time, but we're watching Clindy on pit road. Let's uh, go back and uh, watch what happened to Panero here about, uh, about 30 seconds ago. We'll check this out here. Let's watch this again. Just three wide in the three. In the middle. Actually, this is two, so we're watching down the back stretch. So we'll I don't think he knew that he was he wasn't even clear. We'll we'll watch this a little bit more. And uh, Panero rolling up in the uh, and, and uh, uh, for Porty's tire tracks there. For Porty, then goes up. And oh, and then uh, Seb Alexander underneath Shadid. And now he has uh, the the arrow Schmidt, Schmidt uh, uh, Peterson arrow car right next to him. Here come the car on pit rows. I don't. And you're right. Guy. I don't know. I don't know if he knew that there was a car down there, and he just Panero went right into Seb Alexander. In the meantime, uh, in the meantime, back on the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've gone to the outside of uh, Wheelhide. They're still fighting tooth and nail for that top spot. Oh, Wheelhide had to really leave there to avoid running into the back of the 40. Christian Steele in chat yelling for uh, Go Oster. And I, I suspect uh, Jacob will be up here among the leaders here when it comes time for the white flag. I'm just, you can almost that, bet on that, it. That I would, yeah, yeah, that I wouldn't put it past. That, you know, that call of no caution, that really saved those guys. Ooh, otherwise, yeah, they would not have trapped the lap down. Now we have a lot of them. Muscovitz, Jacob, Clintworth, Trust, Shadid, Brophy, Moleska, Stephen Lee, Siddiq, and Cody Sawyer, they all have hit it. Uh, with the top 13, the 13 haven't. As you can see, a little bit of dirty air moving there on that front pack. As they head off into turn number three. Will Hyde signaling he's going into the pits. Followed by Ty Quilla joining him as well. Yeah, at least he's got a buddy. Yeah, that's that's one thing you definitely want to have here at Fontana's in the IndyCar when you're under green flag pit stops is a buddy to go with you because if you go by yourself, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work out. Let's check out the progress of RM3. There he is. He is the green car, not the familiar red and white car. Up high, uh, uh, just a high, a high side of cleaning out. Cuts to the bottom. He's in that private label green car. Normally we see Brophy in that. He's in Tross tire tracks. Tross down low on Oster. 
and you know this could potentially be the battle for the lead oh yeah you know it is yes out. you know yeah. it is and that's why we're watching it <laughs> these guys have oh, a way of putting their cars in a position to win every single week they are the best of the best I was about to say uh, you took the words out of my mouth these guys are the best of the best doesn't matter if they make an appearance in the guy racing IndyCar series or if they just stay here in the Indy Oval fixed. Meanwhile, Look at this battle. Three wide. Oh, uh, three wide. They're trying to make it three wide, two rows deep. Now, meanwhile, let's take a look up front. Uh, there is Roman Zini, Ragon, the Sidewinder, Stefan Harding, P3, Forporti, Carpenter, Ponto. Uh, they are all together. Muscleman right there in that second group. Now, Nick Sadiq's a lap down. Not sure what happened on his pit stop other than maybe he just got past and uh, it'll cycle through. Right behind AJ is Brian Campbell. Oh, man, disappears, comes back. Poncho to the pits. Trost had the air taken off his front wing. He had to back out of it completely. He was not expecting a move like that by, uh, uh, I believe that was, uh, yeah, RM3. He threw a block on him and caught him off guard. So RM3, the best way to look at it is it ever being in a green car. He is the number one. So uh, we will look for the number one badging on his car. There's Ponto coming back up to speed, that throwback livery. I like it. If you want to get a special mention of your livery, make sure it's a throwback livery, and I'll uh, make sure to get mention of it on the air. <laughs> I did that a couple times, but of course, uh, as the old saying goes, it had to be the four side branding and not the uh, iconic players LTD branding. But it was still <laughs> the paid scheme regardless. Harding is pitting now from fifth. That's going to leave only nine cars that have not made their pit stop, and there's a big gap from the top four to Jim Wall in there. Yeah, let's go Roman Zini, Ragon, Carpenter for Porty, Wallen, uh, Campbell, Musselman, uh, Collins here. We haven't called out Collins yet in the plain white wrapper. Uh, ben Rinaldi uh, right back there. Uh, he's in the, uh, um, well, he's going to be in that, um, that, uh, uh, gosh. That's going to be the Indy 500 entry for, um, the NASCAR driver. God. Name Slippy Larson. Element. Yeah, Kyle. Oh, yeah. yeah, Larson. I was like, come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. <laughs> come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. But yeah. Roman Zini calling that he's going to be pitting in this time by. All right, we'll see Roman Zini. We will ride with him. Uh, just to make oh, note. A there little goes early. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, that's going to lose him quite a bit of time. Yeah, but he got on safely. He got on safely, though. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That pretty much all is all that matters here, especially in the IR18 IndyCar. Uh, scoring note update: Curtis Sawyer uh, DNF four wide going in the, the middle of three and four. I mean, turn one and two. Correction. Jeez. And how they all made it through, I go. will not know. The oh, no. and oh, RM3, trust, they're going for trust. it. Trust. Hit the uh, hit the apron. And he almost went up into Chris Wilhite. Wilhite with a smart reactionary move to avoid a potential disaster. Three wide, two rows deep with two with two wide behind him. Uh, I think I just missed it. But, uh, yeah, Trost uh, hit the apron there and had to uh, bring it back. Wallen just signaling that he's going in. Apparently, there was a bet that was going on that uh, none of us knew about. As I've heard over the drive chat. Glenworth doing everything he can to find a way to oh, get around. Trust. We're watching Trost just on the high side. Oh, my. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, Trost is trying to make a, uh, uh, a bet out of hell run coming on the outside as they head off into turn three and four. Three wide, back down to two wide. This, this is fantastic racing. Cross is going to get a run. He's going to shoot the middle. Oh. He's going to be careful. Whoa. That right, was so almost disaster. Almost disaster, yeah. Carpenter, Regan, Campbell, and Wallum. Now we look like a pace lap for the 500 right now. 
Uh, yeah. And and trust makes it work. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, back I mean, it was, virtual P4 with a uh, with a bit of a a uh, a wash up, if you will, from the understeer in the draft. Almost got up into Stephen Lee there, but he somehow managed to keep it from uh, uh, having disaster happen as he's still battling hard there. Look at that. And folks, this is even this run. is not even a battle for the lead. This is a battle for the lead eventually, but not even a battle for the lead because for Porty way up there, all by him lonesome is your leader. Jacob Collins in the plain white wrapper is P2. And AJ Musselman has finally thrown in the towel and he says, I'm going to pit. He is now uh, pitting from third. So then that brings this whole group who is three by three. Oh, oh I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, super. We got the super best friends up front dicing with one another. Got to throw in Stephen Lee and Nick Sudik as well. Yeah, Sip Dick to the outside. Oh, there. Sudik. Really the lightning under him there. And Trust washes up a little bit. Watch this run Not that Nick much. has on the outside. Yeah, it was pretty It was pretty big. I'll, I don't know if he kind of rolled out of it or just lost his momentum. I, I think it sold I, I, out. There was nobody yeah, in front of him, yeah. yeah. For Porter Pitting from the lead. And gave the old, uh, Nick gave the old Brazilian clear to uh, Trace Shadid there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three, two rows deep again. Plenty, plenty making it four wide. Still four wide. How they are not wrecking, I will never know. But this is what you call the best, the the most exciting form of racing. Still four wide as they go into three and four. Good God, boys. Good job. Oh, oh trust. I saw oh, trust. Yeah, I saw that too. Close. Yeah, he's he's hung out he's hung out in the uh, he's hung out in the inside line. He's he's got nowhere to go. Hey, oh, if you're just joining oh us, God. and uh, thanks for joining us, uh, this is Race First Coverage of 40 Raceware Tuesday night. IndyCar Oval Series Top Split coming to you from Fontana, where we completed 44 of 60 laps. If you're enjoying the uh, coverage tonight, would like to monetarily support us, please find our GoFundMe link in the description and donate to the broadcast. We certainly would appreciate it. The action is hot on the track. Again, uh, if you are enjoying everything, click the, oh, trust to oh, the apron. Bro. And uh, clipping the oh, grass and almost hitting the cone. <laughs> oh man, I, at least he backed out. No, but <laughs> yeah. Give us a like. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already. Ring the bell so you don't miss out on future Race First I Racing broadcasts. Uh, well, we have three, uh, two other legs of the Race First Triple Gold Crown Challenge uh, this season. Here, this is the first leg at California. And speaking of California, we also got to make mention, even though the action is a little crazy right now, we also got to promote in two weeks' time at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on April 20th, right here on Raceverse, your home for IndyCar, because at Raceverse, we know what Indy means. <laughs> it's the third round of the iRacing IndyCar series presented by 4D Racewear, the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. That's right. On the streets of Long Beach, California. Yeah, one of the crown jewels of IndyCar racing. That thankfully will not be touched by uh, a NASCAR Cup car for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Jerry Forsythe, for saving that. Plenty. Plenty and Trace. He just took the words out of Justin's mouth. You hear, ah! <laughs> This is great yeah. racing, boys. This is great racing, guys. I hope everyone watching is enjoying this. And I want to give a shout oh, to Dylan Moskowitz. Man. He's involved in this battle uh, right here, too. And I now here we come with the uh, back racing. Going to the outside again. <laughs> we had a very interested party. Oh, Trost. I thought and it was gone. But we're gone. Says was... there's a uh, oh, Brazilian clear you there, buddy. Oh, oh no, that's going to be a wreck. That's going to be a wreck. Oh my God, how does he? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And there it is. There it is. We knew it. We knew it. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> oh my it goodness. What's going to happen? It and we had a caution happen. with 12 laps remaining. And over goes Brandon Trost. I mean, yeah, Here's, let's watch it. Let's watch it here on the replay. That door kind of opens. He's like, huh, you know, I'll give it a shot. The car fits. 
<laughs> the old Takuma Sato strategy. So, uh, well, right there, I'm going to bring it in. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm going to run out of room here in a little bit. I hope the guy inside knows I'm there. The guy inside, nope, I don't know you're there. And in the wall, both you go. Brandon almost in the orbit. Uh, gets a good look at the inside of uh, of Ragon's cockpit there, and uh, he's done. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he knew Ragon. Ragon had to know. If the spotter's telling him he had a car on the outside, he had to know. But, you know, it, I don't think it was going to be, like, the best move regardless. Even if they made it work, uh, there was nobody that was going to be able to pull him there. So he was going to stall out no matter what. Personally, I would have lifted uh, and leave another day, especially because we know how Regan drives, right? Yes, so yes. He, yeah. He's going to naturally block you no matter what you do. So, oh, you know, there we go. it's just one of those things. Brophy going to pit road. Malech going to pit road. Oster Carpenter staying out. Now, is that um, is that a lack of IndyCar experience, possibly? As someone that's not participated regularly that we've seen in the top split, not saying he doesn't have a lot of IndyCar experience. Same thing with Harding. Yeah. Is that, that, that maybe some of these guys like, okay, I'm going to try to apply a NASCAR strategy here to an IndyCar race and see how that works out? No, that's actually Roman Zini staying out. It's Carpenter, Romanzini for Porty, Wallen, and Musselman. Um, I mean, you can make it work. The tire, to, uh, the, oh, the Musselman's of the only is not that bad. Musselman's only eight laps into his current stint, and so is for Porty. So that makes sense for those two. Uh, Kendall, well, he's nine. So let's let's back that out. He he pro he's on tires less than ten laps old. This is probably not a bad idea. So let's I'll walk that one back as. He might have a he might have an interesting shot here if he gets a, gets a good start and these guys behind him really start racing. I still think that new tires are gonna go by super quickly through those guys, but you know might as well try something different. You definitely got to try something different. Also to note, uh, when Trost launched off of Alexander Ragon, the nose of Trost's car went into the catchments and sheared it off. Hmm. The Harding actually did stay out. Harding and uh, Roman Zini's car is at least head on, kind of look very similar with the, the color aspect. Okay, let's reset the field, shall we, everybody? Carpenter is your leader. He's staying out. Roman Zini is P2. Uh, waiting for the uh, scoring and timing of scoring to shake out here on one of my overlays. Uh, for Portis, P3. Wallen, P4. Musselman, P5. Jacob Oster is the first of the cars that pitted in P6. Robert Maletschka uh, in the seventh. Uh, Tracia did in eighth. Jason Brophy in ninth. Uh, so we do have three of the familiar uh, Robert Maletschka liveries floating out there. Just be notable of that <laughs> yeah. one. And then uh, we do have uh, Clindy, who uh, is uh, in 10th and is sporting, uh, which should be worth a mention there. You got to have a black 14 in your lineup as well when you have IndyCar racing, and it's got to be Coyote Orange. And that's exactly what uh, Clindworth has on his uh, Delara there. 14, orange, orange 14. And uh, he is currently in 10th. Will Height, uh, he will make, it, make a race of it for sure at 11th. Harding in 12th. Sudik in 13th. Stephen Lee in 14th. Moskowit 15th. Campbell 16th. Ponto 17th. Quilla 18th. Collins 19th. And Rinaldi in 20th. And those are all the cars remaining on the track. 20 cars still remaining. Everybody's on the lead lap. Uh, Ragon, Trost, Sawyer, Alexander, and Panero are uh, rounding up the uh, bottom of the order from uh, 21st to 25th. Getting ready to go green. Let's see what the leader does. And I, I tell you what, he is not letting, uh, not paying attention right now because there's a lot of space behind him from Roman Zini. You got to close that space up. Otherwise, he'll get a big run on you and just blow you away. Here we go. Back to green. Ten laps. Ten laps to go, and there was a bit of tire spin between 6th through 10th. A couple of people got caught up. A couple of drivers got caught off guard. But thankfully, nothing major happened. But, like you said, with 10 to go, everything goes out the window because everybody is going to be 
hell-bent to get towards that front to try and get the win. Well, a top three kind of pulled away a little bit, and they're doing a bit of the Dragon Snake down the backstretch for Porty to the inside of Romanzini, trying to get that position. Meanwhile, AJ and Wallen fighting it out for fourth and fifth, and here comes the pack of the guys that just stopped, followed or led by uh, Robert Moletska in the green private label, and he is going to the high side. Yeah, and that, this is where the tires are going to shine. You can take them all the way to the top, no problem at all. Uh, you can also move to the inside. You can do whatever you want. So we, we saw RM3 just blazed by AJ there, and now he's going all the way to the tip of the top. Of the track, <laughs> he's up there. there. Wallen decides to uh, pull up in front of him a little bit, kind of throws a little bit of a block. Oh, guys, so there's Roman Zini and uh, uh, almost made contact, I saw. A little bit of and windy. Just like that. And here comes Oster to the outside. Who the lead, RM3, followed by Elster. Oh, such crazy but good racing. Oh, there's almost contact in the back there. Three wide between Chris Wilhite and I believe that was Jim Wallen as well. Oh, Ooh, Glendy God. had to back out, yeah. And here's where the chaos truly begins. Yeah, the chaos theory and uh, full display here. Chris Will, he's got to run, but oh, look at the look at the middle there. He's got no place to go. Ty Quilla Glenn, up high. He had a great he run there, but wide. Will Height seeing that Ty Quilla has the run. He's he doesn't know what oh, to do. Oh Ty! Oh Ty! Oh, oh Ty! <laughs> oh, that was so close. The room was there, but uh, just barely the room was there. Oh! Oh! That could go oh. back. Will Hyde saves it. Will, yeah, that was a slide. That was a slide. Oh, what? Clindy down. A little bit. Clindy now and following look at, look one at, of uh, them. Stephen Harding making yeah, a charge. Yeah, he is up on the high side there. Yeah, don't count out the Stephen the Harding Steinbrenner uh, throwback scheme, as you said, of Colton Herter from 2018. Oh, that's that it's a little too close there. Sadiq trying to get a run on the outside as he's battling Stephen Lee and Chris Wilhite four wide as they go off into one. Stephen Harding still trying to get that run on the outside as well as Nick Sadiq. Harding has help with Nick Sadiq and I believe that is still Ty Quilla on the outside. I could be wrong. Plenty is going up top four here. Wide four for wide for the lead. Yep. Oh. He's getting a little too close there. He's getting Ooh. a little too close. And look, look at this group Five here. wide. Yeah, let, let's go. Told you. Told you they were going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it just... Oh, Ty getting very, very close to Brophy there. El Patron would be a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they are going to do it. What are you guys thinking? <laughs> It was, yeah, it, was, it just uh, depended on where they were going to do it. Yeah, here we go again. They're going to try and make it five wide. Harding tries it. Doesn't I, have help. Yeah, I think Clindy's oh, kind of sticking. Oh, oh, oh Harding, Clindy. One of the RM3 cars into the wall. Caution, three laps, and that's the race. And I think Robert Malichka is going to be your winner. Yep. That would be Jason Brophy involved as well. But Stefan Harding with a horrifying crash. Wait, hold on. Somehow the scoring is showing Brian Campbell in first. I, uh, uh, yeah. I, I actually now now he's. Oh. Oh no. good. Oh good. Oh my goodness. We'll just watch Harding this again. Nowhere to go. Again, watching it from Harding's point of view, as I think this race is going to fin finish under caution. Brophy got hooked there. And Harding with nowhere to go up into the catch fence. I did I, I couldn't tell though if 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 Clindy came down or Brophy came up or it was just really close racing. Yeah, that's just I think it's just oh, close right, racing so. boys. That's just close racing boys. 
Oof. So this is just weird. <laughs> I... Now I got I I do on my main overlay. Um, and here I'll go ahead and put the ticker up here. I do have Malechka as your leader. But on the official, well, no, we just entered the final lap, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, and it, I have no, uh, like, Oster. Yeah. I have Oster second. Uh, congrats on him for another podium. Tyquilla P three. Uh, uh, he has been fast all season long, uh, even going into the IIS uh, when they came here. Uh, Nick Sudik is fourth. Uh, Ty, uh, or Chris Wilhite is fifth. Uh, we do see Clindy and uh, Brophy trying to bring home uh, limping cars right now. Uh, Stephen Lee is sixth for Porty. Is going to be seventh. Uh, Dylan Moskowitz is eight, eighth. Uh, Kendall Carpenter, uh, good showing at ninth, and Roman Zini in tenth. But uh, once again, uh, even though the car changes and the car color changes, uh, the name remains the same at the top of the standings. Uh, we are four races in, and we've had one winner every single week. That is Robert Malechka, the third RM3, going to extend that points lead here in the Oval Series. Who can stop RM3? Yeah, the more things change, the more they say the same, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and there we go. Now the scoring is updating officially in the sim. Yeah, that, that's what was throwing me off a little bit. It was showing Brian Campbell as the leader of the last lap with a 46-second lead over uh, RM3. So. And Good Oster, and, and uh, there you go, Christian. <laughs> Oster with the P2. Very familiar position for him on this program. Ty Quill, though, I think it'll be the first time we actually get to talk with him. So uh, looking forward to that. And what's sad is in that wreck with Stefan Harding flying into the catch fence. Um, yeah, the uh, the number 14 was uh, involved as well. Ah. Uh. Well, there you see, oh geez, in your face, as everyone does their victory, victory rolls. Uh, <laughs> RM3, your winner, Jacob Oster, P2, Ty Quilla, the bottom step of the podium. Congratulations for those three. Nick Sadiq, P4, Chris Wilhite, P5, Stephen Lee for 40, Moskowitz, Carpenter, Roman Zini, your top 10, Shadid, Ponto, Rinaldi, AJ Musselman, Collins, top 15, Glenworth Wallen, uh, Brophy, Campbell, Harding, Ragon, Tross, Sawyer, Panero, and Alexander remain out the uh, run out the remainder of the 25 car field. Whew. There was action all over the place. It's like, where do I point the camera? Yeah, yeah especially in that uh, when that last wreck occurred. Some would say, is he going to apologize for screaming? <laughs> it literally happened out of nowhere, but what more can you do when you call it crazy action on track? So uh, let's try to get in here, uh, see if Ty Quilla is even available. And if not, we'll move to someone else. But uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, at least bring his car up, and then we'll check and see if he's uh, in the chat. I will uh, say that wreck was almost similar similar to what happened to Mike Conway in the 2010 Indy 500. Also, ironically, near the end of the race. Well, yeah, he was running out of fuel, though. And I, I remember that wreck. That was on yeah. my end of the racetrack, and I remember turning left and looking, and I seen the bottom of an Indy car floating up in the air. That was very, very weird. Uh, let's see. Waiting for interview. Well, we got Clindy down there. We got Stephen Lee down there. Still waiting to see if uh, we'll pick up uh, Ty or Robert or... Uh, Jacob RM4. RM4. <laughs> we might not. Uh, they might just decide to go on celebrating for the uh, the next split. No, there, oh, there, 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 there they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll bring up uh, Jacob Oster first here. Uh, and if uh, Ty pops in, we'll bring him up next. But... Um, here we go. 
Jacob Oster, or we should say Robert Molesko the fourth. Congratulations yes. on the podium. Uh, besides being in a uh, unfamiliar looking car, you kind of finished in a familiar looking spot. Uh, tell us about your race. You kind of just floated to the bottom and uh, to the back and kind of bided your time as kind of like you always do here sometimes. Oh, man, why'd you got to do me like that? I've won the last two fixed championships. My name is Robert Milechka. <laughs> I, you know, it's just, I knew it was going to come down to, well, Rob and I and Jason, Rob, one of the combination of us three with Sudik probably going to be in fourth at how he ended up. I I was very happy to get to that point because I just started in the back and just kind of drove. But Rob just had the better line. Turn four was just so much better on the bottom than the outside he could ever hope to be. Um, other than that, I mean, uh, kind of a by the book uh, race here at uh, uh, California for you. Um, you. You just kind of again biding your time, kind of avoiding the trouble, and then when the time's right, uh, bam, there you are. All of a sudden, it's like when uh, we, we had Christian Steele in chat, and he was rooting for you. And I, I think when he was rooting for you, I think you were back in sixteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, and we're like, by no means do, do we expect at the end of this day that we don't expect to see uh, an Oster up in the top three somewhere. So uh, we knew it was just coming, but um, what's the strategy to keep in the, the, it's so clean here? I mean, there's so much jockeying for position, especially on the front stretch. I mean, I don't even know if people are listening, if they're clear or not. Sometimes you just cut down on you. I mean, uh, how do you keep the nose clean of your car in some of these races? Well, I, I think it's just the fact that we've done a lot of these. We have a bunch of reps on this type of combo, especially on this combo particularly. Yeah. So, like, Rob, Jason, and myself, and anybody else that runs these a lot, but especially, like, Rob and I have done this together for the last, like, year and a half. Uh, we can do this pretty well. We know how to go through the field. We know when to go. We know to when we'd have been patient. I mean, we just followed, I just followed Rob to the front, and then we were 1 2 again after being like 7th and 8th yeah. on the restart. It just comes down to reps, and we definitely have more reps than anybody else in this position, I think. And I, I think it's shown an open and fixed that it kind of sure. comes down to the same, the same people here time and time again. And generally, the same person wins because he's on the inside every single time because he's just so good at getting down there. And I just can't get there yet, but I, I'm working on it. Just a matter of time before the uh, the the apprentice becomes the master, I think. But uh, congratulations on the uh, the P two here, uh, Robert. I mean Jacob, and uh, we shall see you uh, at the next race. Any shout outs? Anybody want to say hi to before we let you go? Uh, I congratulate Jason Brophy on the win, and I'm um, Robert Lechka the third for dying, and Nick Sudik for finishing third, which should actually ended up being fourth. And and, and Dylan, and Dylan, I don't know how to say your last name, Dylan. I'm sorry. Top Little 10. Moskowitz. Yeah, that Moskowitz. Moskowitz. And then uh, AJ, I, I'm sorry you died, AJ. Chris did good. So, yeah, it was, was fun, fun. to to um, uh, keep in Discord call for everybody and just kind of work together and vibe. All right, positive vibes all around. Congratulations. We'll catch you uh, next week at uh, probably not as racy, but uh, we'll see how it pans out in Nashville. So, see you next week. All right, thank you. We'll try our best. <laughs> All right, let's bring up uh, the next uh, Robert Moleska, or also known as Jason Brophy, uh, as your winner tonight. Uh, as we said, as you took the uh, checkered flag, as more things change, uh, you might hate a different paint job, but things all remain the same. Uh, you win uh, four for four to start this season to uh, defend your title here in the fixed series. Talk about your race and uh, talk about surviving it in the green car no less yeah i know i thought i was gonna get wrecked there a few times uh yeah just kind of your typical montana race right where right you guys ride around have some fun with the first 30 laps and then the, the racing really finally starts picking up where uh all the big names get to the front and you know who's gonna be up there every race so uh yeah i just kind of rode around like i said for 30 laps and then <laughs> got to the front took control and did what i do now you are aware about the uh, the green car jinx, right? No, not really. Uh, okay, Every, everybody, go ahead and Google the green car jinx after this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the you you uh, survive the green car jinx. Green car jinx is pretty much if you drive a green car, you're going to be involved in the wreck. 
which didn't really pan out for you or Ty Quilla for that matter. You worked for Jason. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, he would have been driving the green car. He would have been there. in that wreck. But uh, yeah. I believe British Racing Green is the only allowed green to be on a car. Every other green is supposedly bad luck. But mm-hmm. good luck for you today. Uh, I, I don't know how you keep doing it. But next week, um, uh, we're going to a very challenging track. I said these cars are tough to drive at Nashville. Um, everything's air, very aero dependent uh, there at Nashville. It's there's not a lot of grip. It was very single file. It's very hard to pass. What is the outlook for next week look like for you? Yeah, it's probably one of the bigger wild cards of the twelve weeks, right? I mean, we don't really know. Uh, I mean, I, I believe we have a quite a bit of downforce. We might have max downforce, um, and it's a night race. Uh, so hopefully. I think at least what the plan going in or planning all this out was that the leader like um didn't have to use all the tracks so maybe we could get some passes for the lead i mean it'll still be extremely difficult to pass uh back in the field but hopefully um uh we can maybe get an extra lane or maybe even two but yeah we don't really know it's a gigantic wild card next week yeah, it's extremely tough. I remember when uh, Nashville Super Speedway came out, I was like, oh, sweet, you know, a nice new Super Speedway oval that we can run the Indy cars on. I remember running Indy cars on there like, this This is not fun. <laughs> this is not fun at all. Yeah. So uh, I can only imagine uh, when you get uh, everybody in a top split uh, that was highly competitive out there trying to trying to do the same thing. It, after a while, it, it just it, it just because not fun at all. So hopefully uh, you guys get some practice in and get to take a look at uh, how that's going to pan out. But um, shout outs uh, anybody want to say hi to once again uh, uh, f- I guess you're running out of people so uh, make sure you got anybody new that you <laughs> yeah. want to say hi to or uh, no not really just uh, <laughs> you know, looking for next week looking, I think we might be on track for uh, highest points in the season ever so that's kind of what's keeping me motivated to keep winning these things is to get another record what is a record Um, let's see give me like five seconds here well, you, uh, you let me know. We'll, we'll definitely track it if yeah, it's going to be I a record. Data. It is. Let's see. I think Demerit had 1,899. 1,899. Points. Okay. So 1,900 is the target. Um, yeah, 1,900 is the target. So. Okay. Hopefully we can get that. I mean, I think we will. Uh, just going to depend if I can keep getting quality finishes. All right. Well, congratulations. And uh, I'm sure we will see you next week. At, yep, uh, yes, yep. You got it. All right. Wow. Uh, I don't see uh, Ty, but uh, I'm sure he would be uh, pretty thrilled with his uh, finish there in third. Guys, uh, Justin, then uh, moving it on to uh, Antonio. uh, Thoughts on this race and then uh, moving on to Nashville next week? Uh, Let's just say, wow. Wow. (laughs) That was absolutely chaotic racing. Antonio? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I have to totally agree uh, <laughs> with, with you, Justin. It, it, it's, you know, it's crazy. I, I, I did one last night. Uh, I was looking forward to driving this one, but then the updates uh, kind of threw me off. Uh, but man, what a blast to see this race on full live. Uh, a lot of respect for racing, although, you know, very close racing due to the nature of the track, and that's going to happen. You're going to have folks uh, that are going to be saving their stuff at the beginning, and then they're going to go for it, right? And so we saw four wide, five wide, like I got, like I told you, it would happen. <laughs> and uh, they, they delivered a fantastic race. As you know, it's typical for uh, Fontana. And I, I'm gonna bookend that by saying, yeah, if you haven't watched the Map TV 500 from 2015, go ahead right now and go watch it because it's fantastic. <laughs> Checking chat there. Nick Sudik, dog, I was going to have the run. F. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he had it in the bag, he thought. Uh, yeah, and then uh, he saw AJ's wreck, and yeah, AJ, uh, that's uh, unfortunate. But uh, I thought it was a very uh, entertaining uh, race. So uh, I want to thank everybody that uh, stayed out in chat. Uh, looks like uh, Steele says that he'll probably stream his race uh, this weekend. So uh, find that on his, uh, I believe, his Twitter page. Check that out. Uh, from a driver's uh, point of view. So that's it for tonight. Once again, your podium from uh, Fontana is uh, some combination of uh, Robert Molechka and Jacob Oster up front. 
And Ty Quillen in third. <laughs> Join racers again next week for round five of the Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split of season two of 2024 as we head to the very challenging we talked about Nashville Super Speedway. Coverage begins about 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Again, that's 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Remember, new time, time, time change here a couple weeks ago. Just if you don't know, just come right here to YouTube and find youtube.com slash race first. We've got all the correct times for you. We love bringing these races to you, but they're not easy and require time and money to produce because of your generosity and donations. We've been able to bring you IndyCar Oval Action nearly commercial free. So if you share our passion for the sport of IndyCar, enjoyed our coverage of the 4D Race for a Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split, please take time to visit our GoFundMe page. Link is in the description and donate to our 2024 broadcast fund. We realize times are tough, so any contribution will be greatly appreciated. We thank you for watching and making us part of your Tuesday evenings going forward each and every week. Now, as you know, the YouTube Gabler Gun game is not an easy one, so please help support Race First with the weekly grind. Leave a comment below and let us know your thought of tonight's race, and if you enjoyed tonight's coverage, support us by smashing like in the video. If you're new, click subscribe and why you gotta hit the, don't, uh, don't forget to hit the bell for weekly reminders so you don't miss out on more Race versus other iRacing programming, including later this week. Uh, the Vora DW12 Series Season 2 kicks off Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Keep your browser set here for the most in-depth IndyCar knowledge and all of iRacing. Race first, we know what Indy means. Race first, Tuesday night, IndyCar Oval Series top split. Naming rights paid for by the good guys at 4D Racewear. Check out their line of made-for-sim racing gloves, shoes, and apparel. Visit them today at 4DRacewear.com or click on their link in today's description. For business inquiries and learn more about what we do here at Race First, visit racefirst.com. Like us on Facebook or follow on Twitter. You can follow all of us on Twitter via our handles right here at the bottom of your screen right now. So for Stephen Larkamp, who's not here, but he'll be here next week, Justin Peshauer, the boss, El Patron, Antonio Estrada, and everyone at Race First, I'm Gary Gotcha, saying all good night, thanks for watching, and all the men and women serving in the military and as first responders, Godspeed, God bless, and come home safe. Catch us again next week in Nashville for the next race of the 40 race for Tuesday night, IndyCar Oval Series top split. Good night.